Sir Nicholas Soames. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I <coughs> start, Mr. Speaker, by congratulating my right honourable friend, the Chancellor, on his speech today and on his prudent and very sensible stewardship of our economy yeah. Yeah. at this very difficult time and the e extraordinarily clear way in which he expressed his intent. Mr. Speaker, I should remind the House that I was a staunch Remainer. I campaigned vigorously to remain, and I would certainly do so again. I am proud that my constituency of Mid-Sussex voted to remain by 53%, and I am personally deeply saddened by the result of the referendum, and I believe that our wonderful country has made an historically bad decision that we will long regret. However, the country voted to leave the European Union in the referendum of 2016, the biggest democratic exercise in our history. And I am first and foremost a Democrat, and I believe very strongly that that vote must be honoured. At the time of the referendum, the then Prime Minister, my friend David Cameron, assured the country that the result would be respected. I echoed that assurance at the last election and confirmed that I, however much I regretted it, must support the democratically expressed wish of my country. And I wish to make clear that whilst there are very serious disagreements in this House on all sides, I do believe we all have the best interests as we see it of our country and that we fight the good fight with confidence but also with proper respect for those who hold long-standing views that are very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very taken with my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister's speech, at the beginning of this debate. And I wish, Mr Speaker, to pay the warmest tribute to her for her tremendous courage, yeah, her doggedness, yeah, her yeah, diligence yeah, 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 yeah. and her determination to arrive at a deal in the national interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I believe that she has achieved in this withdrawal agreement an essentially pragmatic compromise, which she yeah. rightly justifies as being a realistic conclusion of that which is possible. And I hope that this House realises that there will not be a better deal on offer, and that if this arrangement is voted down, no different deal is going to miraculously appear, and there would be a profound period of uncertainty and risk that we might crash out with no deal, and that would, by common consent, be a disaster yeah, for our yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, this withdrawal agreement is going to leave almost nobody satisfied, but gives all sides of the argument something. It's not a perfect deal, and it was never going to be, for that is the nature of a complex negotiation. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah, indeed yeah. a compromise. And it would be a fatal mistake, as the Prime Minister said in her speech, to let the search for the perfect bre Brexit prevent a good Brexit. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's also important that this House should acknowledge that the Prime Minister, by ignoring the strident noises off, under immense pressure from all sides of our own party and this House, has managed to temper these negotiations in such a way as to make sure that we will be able, in time, to retain the closest partnership with our European friends and allies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remain deeply anxious that a no-deal Brexit or a second referendum, which would likely be inconclusive after a vicious and harsh campaign, yeah. might push Britain into the kind of loathsome and hateful partisan bitterness that now so disfigures American public life and is so damaging to its democratic settlement and to its political discourse. Yeah, yeah. We do not want that in this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What will be achieved by support for the withdrawal agreement is one thing, but as the House knows there are years of hard and very difficult negotiations ahead. So Mr Speaker, after really the most careful thought, I have concluded that what is proposed in the withdrawal agreement substantially delivers on the referendum result and must thus be honoured. Under these arrangements, it is clear that the United Kingdom will be leaving the political union, 
ending free movement, leaving the customs union, leaving the common fisheries policy and the common agricultural policy, ending the jurisdiction of the European Court of Justice, and regaining the chimera of our sovereignty, and is thus entirely deserving of the support of this House. I give way to the Honourable Lady. I'm very grateful that he's giving way. He has said at the beginning that he believes that the country made, with the decision of the referendum, a mistake that they will regret. How can he not, in his conscience, go forth and continue with that argument and persuade people to see that the best place that we have is within the European Union? Craig, I, I tried at length, in my own inept way, to explain why that was the case. Um, I, I believe that the government must honour the result of the referendum, democratically expressed in the biggest electoral exercise this country has ever had, and not to do so would be a disgrace. This plan, Mr Speaker, in my view, has very carefully and very cleverly managed to separate Britain from the European Union. Forty-six years of combined and earnest endeavour and legislation with, frankly, miraculously minimum damage to each side. We need to keep it that way, for this is a golden prize, given the circumstances, and one that would be extremely ill-judged to throw away, and, frankly, above all, quite contrary to our national interest. I am confident that we can then move on to building a stable future framework, as very clearly set out by my right hon. Friend, the Chancellor which will formalise the great importance of our future relationship with our European friends, allies and partners. There is only one agreed proposal on the table. We owe it to our country to lay aside our differences, to accept that our great national traditions of pragmatism, common sense and compromise have never been more vital than now and then to come together, as the Prime Minister said, as one union of four nations to reassert the confidence that we should most definitely have in the opportunities that lie ahead for our nation's future, if only we can grasp this nettle and move on. It will be the experience of many right honourable and honourable friends on all sides of the House of Commons that most of our fellow citizens devoutly wish us to get this done. And for us to focus on the things that they rarely care about and worry about in their daily lives – schools, policing, the National Health Service, transport, the environment – just getting from A to B. And all the other issues which have inevitably not had the attention they should, as the Government has had to focus so much of its necessary effort on coming to this moment. Mr Speaker, I am approaching the end of my <coughs> parliamentary life. I am, truly, I am truly sad beyond words that our wonderful country has reached this pass. But I feel very strongly that we really must not reject this agreement and must go back to square one, which would mean perhaps another deeply divisive and very unhappy referendum. In turn, that would mean the most damaging uncertainty, economically, continuing division which will inevitably threaten the jobs and lives of our constituents, and investment in our economy. And I am, above all, afraid, earn this House the undying contempt of the British people for not having the courage and the vision to grasp this deal, however we may feel about it, in the interest of the greater good. To conclude, Mr Speaker, I am sure that there are many right honourable and honourable members on both sides of this House who remember Lewis Carroll's wonderful poem, The Hunting of the Snark, which includes the following lines, which I believe are appropriate. The principal failing occurred in the sailing, and the bellman, perplexed and distressed, said he had hoped at least when the wind blew due east that the ship would not travel due west. (laughs) Mr Speaker, to coin a phrase from a greater, kinder and more resolute period in our national life. Come, let us go forward together and settle this now.